You know, one really cool element about bow hunting in North Dakota is that the archery season begins early September. Realistically, you know, you've got anywhere from say three to five, six days where you've got a pretty good chance of shooting a buck that's in velvet. And what's also neat about this is that a lot of these bucks are still in their bachelor groups. Pretty interesting, you know, these deer will have a summer pattern and then they'll go into that fall pattern where everything changes. At the end of the day, a trail camera will tell you that a deer exists, but you know, to really fine tune and pattern a deer, a lot of times you have to try to get eyes on that deer and watch, you know, from a distance and watch the spotting. So figure out where these deer are bedding and, you know, how they're getting from point A to point B, because if you don't know that information, it can be really hard to kill a, a specific buck. tail on that rooster. Passion for the Hunt is brought to you by Shields, Crestliner Boats, Travel Manitoba, Federal Premium Ammunition, North Dakota Tourism, Primo's Hunting. What a nice evening here in North Dakota. We're just out glassing for some deer and there are quite a few of them out already. We're kind of getting the lay of the land. You can see the top of the ground blind down there. There's actually deer filtering by it already. It's a nice pinch point. We're surrounded by beans. So those green beans are gonna be key for where these deer are traveling right now. You know, just spending time glassing like this is so important because nine times out of 10, I guess wrong when I trying to determine where a deer is bedding. You just can't always assume the thickest cover, the biggest cover. It's amazing how much they surprise you. And a lot of times, you know, he can be glassing an area all night and just see glimpses of a particular buck where you almost have to get lucky where, you know, they'll be just on a hill where the sun hits it just right or they show up. I mean, literally you might see a glimpse of a, of a big buck for three seconds, five seconds, then it's gone and you're staring for another 20 minutes and, you know, can hardly pick it up. And so you got to spend some time, but it's probably the most important thing you can do. I would rather scout than hunt. If I'm not sure where to hunt, I'll just sit in glass. You know, you can never scout enough, especially when it comes to patterning a specific deer. And I never get to scout as much as I wish I could. I mean, I know people that are out four or five times a week in the summer glassing. The biggest thing with killing a, a big deer in my mind is you have to figure out where they live. You're never gonna shoot a big deer if there's no deer there. That's the big part is just eliminating places where there aren't any big deer. You know, obviously you can use trail cameras to do a little bit of that for you. You know, probably the biggest thing with scouting is just finding that specific deer, figuring out where they live, and then figuring out their patterns so you can try to figure out how to slide in and uh, harvest them. And, and you can definitely overhunt. A lot of times what I find is once I have a deer pattern, usually it's the first, second, third time that I sit is when I kill that deer. If it takes more than that, the deer starts to pattern you. And those big mature bucks, they just shift away from that activity. What I like to do is just stay out of a spot completely and don't go in until I hunt it. A lot of times, some of the first sits are some of the best sits. showed up out of nowhere. Don't have a clue where he came from. But the good news, he's in before the sun's even below the horizon. Game on, couple does. He's looking pretty good. Beautiful night in North Dakota. Ducks flying around, deer walking around. Can't wait to get the season open. Jason's gonna hunt tomorrow night. And regardless of what happens, we're gonna come in here Hopefully the weather's good and the deer do exactly what they did tonight. Getting a little excited now. So you know when you're hunting out in the Dakotas or just out in the Great Plains states, you, know, you can almost bank on the fact that you're not going to necessarily have a lot of trees or at least have a tree in the right spot for a good tree stand location. And so we use ground blinds a lot. The thing you got to remember about this type of terrain is there's a lot of farming and ranching activity happening. So you know you have people you know baling for example where you know one day the, you've got this you know field of grass and the next day it's you know a bunch of round bales sitting on it and so deer are used to some change and some human activity so you just have to blend in your hunting activity with that farming and ranching activity and so what I find is just drive out put the blind up stake it down and leave it 
Some people want to hide the blind and conceal the blind, camouflage the blind. What I find is that just leaves more scent, more smell, more presence in that area. And so I find that I'm just better off just popping them up. The deer get used to it in a hurry, but very effective because the beauty of this is that if you pattern a deer, you can stick a ground blind exactly where you need to stick it in order to kill that deer. And that versatility and flexibility is the key to using ground blinds in this type of terrain. When you've logged hours building trust in your gear, you've really built trust in the most important tool in your arsenal, yourself. Are you ready? You can see the deer, but your rangefinder can't. Never again. New Bushnell Prime Laser Rangefinders are two times brighter than the competition, so you can see and range your target with laser precision, even in the dimmest conditions. Our new all-glass optical system delivers twice the light transmission, double the confidence at dawn and dusk. The Prime 1300 and 1700 by Bushnell. For Bluetooth and applied ballistics, check out the Nitro 1800. Well, it's opening day of archery season here in North Dakota. And, you know, it's, it's deja vu in the sense that I sat in this exact same tree stand and shot just this beautiful velvet buck. All the scouting that I've done this year, there's another buck that's kind of on the same pattern, using the same area. And uh, I never saw this deer last year, but this summer this deer showed up. We're just getting ready. I always like to shoot my bow before I go in just to make sure everything's good to go there. It just gives me a little bit of confidence. Same northwest wind, same tree, same stand. Boy, wouldn't that be something if this happens again? Oh, I guess we don't have to whisper anymore. Boy, that's a beautiful deer. That's the closest I've been to that deer now. Walking into the stand, opening night, everything that I've been watching with the spotting scope, this deer's been coming from way back over this hill. And tonight of all nights, he's bedded down right here. I don't think we startled him too bad, but he never winded us, but still. Oh, that can't be good. I hate to say it, but we shouldn't even hunt the stand. Just let it settle, figure out a different game plan. Yeah, he never winded us. Whew. The highs and lows of deer hunting. He's hardhorned too, he shed. That's the first time I've seen him hardhorned. We just got set up here in a 360 blind. Same spot as last year and we're hunting the same buck. We were out here two nights ago scouting and about the best scenario happened where the buck we were after was standing in front of this blind well before that sun was below the horizon. So I've got Jason behind the camera tonight. We're gonna sit here and hopefully he does the same exact thing. So we've got some clouds coming in from the west. I'm sure it's a little weather system close to go time for these deer it's schooling off and uh, just a matter of time before we probably see our first deer here well we were just enjoying the sights and sounds sitting in the ground blind and then the clouds started to move in and it got darker and darker and before you know it we were already almost out of camera light and then the buck showed up they were in the beans. There were a couple really nice looking bucks in there. And we were just kind of waiting for that big eight pointer. We were able to watch those bucks for a while. They were skyline, just feeding on the beans. But you know, they were acting a little 
squirrely because the wind was blowing and the storms were coming in. And as it continued to get darker and darker, then that big eight point showed up. And of course it's too dark to shoot and all we can do is sit in there, wait for it to get pitch black and hope that we don't spook those deer too bad getting out of the ground blind and getting back to the truck. A couple of nice bucks just showed up. They're standing in the soybeans. I don't think either one of them is that eight pointer we're looking for. But they're gonna be some good bucks next year. The spot's gonna be on fire next year. That one in the back's the, the one we're after. He's the one in the back. That one needs to grow a year. He's gonna be a stud. Yeah, he's always oh, got split. Gee, he's got split brow too. Look at his face. I think he's a two-year-old man. He's gonna be a major deer. If you think there's nothing new in ground blinds, the new Double Bull Surround View is about to prove you wrong. What's up? I'm Will Primo. What do you think about this? Man, this is nice. This, this is, is exclusive one-way see-through walls. I'm at a loss for words. Man, I couldn't see y'all in here. Look back there. You would never have seen that. It's a blind without a blind spot. It's really like you're not even hunting in a blind. The Double Bull Surround View Blind. Download the app and see it for yourself from Primo's. Ground blinds allow you to get up close and personal with the game that you're pursuing. And the Primo's double bull blinds have revolutionized how we hunt from the ground. The double bull surround view line of blinds has this one-way see-through mesh, which allows us as the hunter to see out, but the animals we're hunting can't see into the blind. This conceals our movement and makes hunting out of blinds really simple. Whether you're turkey hunting, out west hunting deer or elk, this blind is easy to set up, it's very versatile, and it just allows you to see a lot more while sitting in a ground blind. They work great for western hunting where you may not have a lot of trees for tree stands. This blind allows you to get down on the ground and allows you to cut off the deer on their daily patterns as they're traveling throughout the open areas. So stop by your local Shields, pick up a Primos double bull blind, get on the ground, and get up close and personal with the animals this fall. set up here in the double bowl. The wind is a lot less strong than last night. The weather's way less volatile. And we had that storm push in and the deer didn't move till about right at sunset. So we're hoping that the conditions tonight are a lot better for them to get up. The wind isn't as good as yesterday, where if they get too far down this pinch point, they may get our wind. So our best bet is to get on them when they're right in front of the blind here before they get to our left. So with a little bit of luck, we'll see some deer a little bit earlier tonight. Get them filtering through, heading out to the beans. Well, the storms have moved off and it was a really pleasant night to be sitting in the ground blind and the deer were moving earlier. We had some small bucks come in. There was even a doe with a couple of fawns that still had their spots on, which tells you we're hunting early season here in North Dakota. And as the sun slowly started to set, you know, there was constant deer movement. We had deer in front of us the entire night, which is always fun when you're sitting in a ground blind because you're, you're on ground level with them 
and you know you just kind of sit still sit back and and watch the interactions and and enjoy what you're seeing from a ground blind it's just a unique perspective and we were anticipating that a few of those bucks that we had seen late the night before maybe would show up but as luck would have it the bigger bucks didn't show up but we sure did have a lot of entertainment that night with does, fawns, and smaller bucks. When you're looking for a spot to put a ground blind, you'll know, focus on your edges and your pinch points. A lot of times, you know, there are a lot of potholes out in this country, and so I, what I love to do is have water behind me. That way it forces the deer to walk in front of the blind as they're moving back and forth. And so water can be a great ally if you're using a ground blind, whether it's a river, stream, a slough, some type of a pond or pothole. That way it keeps the deer out in front of the blind. And the other thing is what I've noticed is that when your scent blows across that water, it's almost like the water absorbs a lot of your scent. And so what you'll see is even if a deer is 200 yards downwind of you on the other side of a pond, they just don't catch you because like that, that water just sucks up your scent. And so pick a good location, you know, put your ground blinds out. You know, I've even sat them out three, four days before when I was gonna hunt. These deer get acclimated to them right away, but keep your presence down and you can kill a lot of deer out of a ground blind. Well, this is perfect here. We got plenty of time. Wind's blowing the right way. We had some rain come through earlier. I wouldn't expect to see anything in probably another hour, hour and a half, but it's good to get in here early. You know, there's just kind of a neat pinch point where I've got water behind me. And obviously if the deer come right next to the blind here, they might win me, but water keeps a deer usually out in front. And so usually they'll come, there's kind of a big high spot, these deer bed, and there's like a bunch of gnarly weeds and cattails back to my right and then there's stuff out in front of me so usually they come across and this is just kind of an intersection there's a field here then there's soybeans back over on this other corner and so they just cross right through here it's just kind of a pinch point and uh, just been a great spot over the years I tell you what, whether I'm in a tree or in a ground blind, I use this nose jammer a lot. And the whole key is you gotta use a lot of it. If you use a lot of it, it's amazing. I mean, I've had deer come in downwind of me and it's uh, definitely a product where you can get lucky <laughs> in the sense that you'll see things that you didn't think were possible. And I'm not saying not to hunt the wind because you have to, but sometimes when something happens that you don't predict or something happens that uh, you didn't anticipate, that can save the day. North Dakota's hunting and fishing is some of the best in the nation. The birds are flying, the fish are biting, tails are wagging, and you're smiling just thinking about it. Plan your visit at NorthDakotaLegendary.com. You know, so this year it seemed like, you know, the antler growth was really good. It seemed like the moisture this summer helped. And obviously, you know, I had, you know, half a dozen deer that, you know, I would consider mature bucks that I'd been happy to harvest. But there was one deer in particular, a big four by four, just a big mainframe four by four that had a little bit of history with. And so last year and the year before, I tried to get my cameraman Chris on that deer. And so we hunted that deer, oh goodness, we probably sat, you know, maybe a half dozen times trying to kill that deer. And we had that deer in front of us numerous occasions, you know, where we were close in the sense that it seemed like each time that deer walked in front of us or stepped in front of us or made a move, it was like five minutes too late. So we've had a lot of cool encounters with that deer. And so just with the history and the encounters, when that deer showed up again, you know, it was on the exact same patterns, you know, I thought, boy, if, if the opportunity presents itself, I'm gonna try to harvest that deer. We've got our first visitor. It's always a good omen when you see a few deer, even if they're just does, see a few deer moving early. Oh, here comes a buck.
here comes a couple of bucks. There's a couple of them here. Let's see what these deer are gonna do. I can't believe that just happened. He took off this way, then he hooked to the left, and there's so many deer running, but I just saw him go right back over there. I didn't see him crash, but wow. We'll go out and see what we got from blood, see if we can find the arrow, but it's gonna get dark here soon. Wow, great North Dakota buck, yes. You know, I like angled shots where they're slightly angled away where you can aim for that opposite shoulder because you just, you pass through so many more vitals that way versus when it's just perfectly broadside. So I felt like I had a good angle. You know, just replaying the shot in my mind, I'm sure that I, I got the lungs as well. So it looked like I got liver and lungs and then, well, that's lethal. That deer isn't gonna go very far. But just the fact that there wasn't a lot of blood on the grass or blood on the arrow. And so the best thing you can do is just let that deer sit down, let that deer bed down find it in the morning because those deer will cramp up and they'll bleed out. Unfortunately, about midnight last night, it started to rain. And so the rain washed away all the blood here, but I don't think this deer went far. I just didn't want to push it last night. You know, kind of the old saying with bow hunting is if in doubt, back out and wait. Right back here is the blind. I saw that deer come across here and it just cut across here and then it just disappeared. So I'm thinking that deer is right out in here. I don't think he went very far, hopefully, but. Yeah, the rain washed away all the blood. Even where I knew there was blood, there was, it was gone this morning. Found the arrow, there's a little bit of watery. Oh, there he is right there. <laughs> oh my. Look at that, still in velvet. Oh, 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 oh. oh wow. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a long night when you, when you gotta wait till the morning to find him. But wow, what a stud of a buck. You talk about some cool history. You know, the rack has been the same size for the last three years, but just a cool deer. Have a deer like this standing in front of you in velvet, it's a pretty hard deer to pass up, that's for sure. It's kind of bittersweet when the season is over this quick. September 3rd, literally the season's been just getting going. Kill this deer in the third night that I hunted. And now the season's over. Kind of numbing because it's fun to hunt all through the year, but can't pass up an opportunity like that either. So it's always great to get a deer, but then it's always kind of sad too because the season's over. So I can't tell you how many hours I've sat back and glassed trail cameras. I typically start scouting in July. And typically the harder you scout, the more time you put in, the luckier you get. At least for me anyways, I don't, I'm not that lucky where I can just go out and not scout and have a chance. I gotta, I gotta put in my time, but put in the time and sometimes it can happen pretty quick like this season. You know, just the whole process, the scouting, the hunting, the sitting, even the nights where, you know, you don't see many deer, just, I just, I love it all. That's probably the only sad part about this is that uh, for this year, this all comes to an end. But that right there, that's an awesome buck. Passion for the Hunt was brought to you by Shields. Crestliner Boats. Travel Manitoba. Federal Premium Ammunition. North Dakota Tourism. Primo's Hunting.